Hi, my name is Kai. I'm a software developer and business analyst and I've been following IOTA since 2018. Today I'm going to show you my way to create an app for the Shimmer network which runs on mobile devices and the desktop. So what if you have an ingenious idea based on the IOTA protocol? And you hear everyone talking about Web3, NFT, smart contracts, etc. But you feel like there's a little part missing that isn't discussed enough. The human interface. And your idea and your end product is intended for everyday people using mobile devices and desktop PC and or browsers. And you feel that there are too few examples of how IOTA's libraries can be integrated into an app. Then you are right here. Because we are talking about the user interfaces for macOS, Windows, Linux, iOS, Android and also maybe browser extensions. In my opinion, these platforms should be supported when you think about a messenger app or wallet app with additional features or an app or apps for an identity ecosystem or maybe if you want to control smart contracts you want to start a chain via a call data request or something like this this video is a personal journey about how i found a solution that fits my needs because I want to learn also the DLT concepts and don't want to waste too much time with technical setups. Coming from Java and JavaScript, I have listed up the frameworks I know, that is Ionic and React Native and Tori. Ionic and Tori are hybrid apps, that means you write a web app and this web app is wrapped inside a browser engine or web view. React Native is of type compiled app where your JavaScript and your UI components are compiled into native UI widgets. Together with Expo I had a very pleasant developer experience in the past. The outcome of the three technologies is different. Ionic supports mobile and web. For desktop you need also Electron. Tori was created first for desktop apps and since last month they have an alpha release for the mobile platform and React Native only supports mobile apps. When Rust comes into the game, Ionic can use capacitor plugins as a native bridge for the mobile part and Neon for Electron. Tori has an inter-process communication between the web app and the Rust backend, so Tori is in the core written in Rust. And React Native provides modules as native bridge solution. Ionic is from the private company Ionic, Tori is a community project and React Native comes from Facebook. On my search I also googled other technologies and I found Flutter. Flutter comes from Google and is a tool to build native apps with one different programming language. It is Dart and not JavaScript. But you have one code base and um, UI and business logic are written as code in this programming language. So you don't handle HTML, JavaScript and CSS anymore. At first it sounded a bit weird to me to write UI and business logic as code. But in the end you will get a compiled native app for mobile, desktop, web and browser extensions on browser. And Rust can be integrated by Dart's foreign function interface. Okay, after this summary, what is the best technology to write apps? And the answer is, it depends. It depends what is your knowledge and what you'd like to achieve. There are, of course, other solutions like Quasar, which is based on Rust and Vue.js. But I focused on um, the four mentioned frameworks. 
Firefly is the best known app that supports all platforms from mobile to desktop. And of course I took a look into its repository. I can find there almost everything on my wish list. It includes the wallet RS lib and indirectly of course IOTA RS and Stronghold RS. It has a connection to Rust via its Firefly actor system. That's a system where web app and a Rust backend can exchange messages containing a type and a payload of the request. When you run Firefly in a simulator, you can watch this in the console. I wondered if the Firefly app could be an example for me, so I listed the stack of use technologies. Then I matched them with my skills. As you can see, that was not really satisfying. And the question was, what do I want to achieve? So I want a pleasant developer experience that is a limited number of use technologies and I want to use the Rust libraries directly. I want of course support mobile and desktop and I want a secure technology using Stronghold in the background. So my first conclusion was, in my case, that I wanted to have a deeper look into Tori and Flutter. Tori is written in Rust, so when you compile it, you will get a Rust app. The web view is controlled by a web view controller in Rust and you have the opportunity to use your skills from JavaScript, CSS and HTML. Unfortunately, at the time of my decision in October last year, Tori didn't support mobile apps, but only desktop apps. But good news, begin of December, Tori announced the mobile alpha release. On the other hand, I had a deeper look into Flutter. I found a web page about a Flutter Rust bridge which makes it possible that Rust code can be included as a library into Flutter apps. You can write your own Rust code with your own Rust functions and a generator creates a Dart interface which can be included into your own Dart code. When you run your project, your Rust code is cross-compiled into the correct target and integrated in the app. So my final decision was Flutter. In parallel I looked at the developer sources the IOTA Foundation provides to us. There's the node software and the libraries. The libraries in Rust are called the single source of truth, according to IOTA. In my opinion, developers should learn at least some basics of Rust. I, by myself, used a lot cargo log to understand the dependencies which are used in the projects. And the last point is the wiki and the Tangle improvement proposals, where I, which I found useful. And only two more slides before I show you my demo app. The Shimmer Playground app is a Flutter app with a list and a details section. My idea behind was to run some Rust examples from the wiki inside of an app. The list contains different examples you can choose. The examples use one or more Rust libraries. In the details section the selected example can be tried out. I implemented a generic stepper to make a step-by-step -step execution possible. Let's have a look. 
On the left side is the Android emulator, on the right the macOS desktop app. This is the list with my implemented examples. As you can see, the app is responsive. The wider the screen, the more content is displayed. The examples are taken from the wiki. Go to the Shimmer subpage where the libraries and the examples can be found. Here, the get node information example and the generate a mnemonic example. The wallet examples are more challenging because a stronghold snapshot file and a RocksDB database for wallet data are created in the file system. And my last example is from the identity library, which is creating a decentralized identifier. Furthermore, there is a left menu with some information about the library versions, an about button and a binary to hex converter. When you click on the top right Shimmer logo, you'll find some data about information that is currently stored in the app preferences. By now, everything is empty like as you started the app the first time. What I'm now gonna do is that I'll execute each example one after another. At first, the get node information from the client library. This information is also stored in the preferences. Second, generate mnemonic. The output can be copied into the clipboard and it is also copied and stored in the preferences. Next, I'm creating a wallet account. The first input are the 24 words which I've just created in the example before. For the other inputs, I've created default values for the account alias and the stronghold password, which I could overwrite. And in the last step, I create the wallet. The result can be proven the best when you go to the file system and check if the snapshot file and the database have been created. This plist file is the location where the preferences are stored. In the next example, I'm generating an address. Here I'm using again the default inputs. The generated address can be copied and pasted. And it is used to request some funds. To check the balance, there's another example. Here you can see I have received 1000 shimmers. If I repeat the funds request, I get another 100 shimmers. You can check the balance also on the right sidebar and you'll find the balance at the bottom. Now the last example. Creating and storing a decentralized identifier on the Tangle only works when you have requested some funds for the specific address before. This example takes some time. My summary. In my opinion, it's a very powerful setup. The whole power of Flutter can be combined with the whole power of IOTA's libraries. I'm still a beginner of Flutter and of Rust, but I don't regret my choice and the time I spent to it. Other frameworks will definitely make it as well. It's a matter of where you are as a single developer or which tool your company has chosen. Read the pros and cons I have listed from my experiences during the time. Thank you for watching. If you like the video, give it a like. If you have questions or remarks, leave them in the comments below. And if you like, follow me on Twitter or YouTube. Bye.